aim of the experiment to generate laboratory know-how for the process of production of biodiesel from the given oil feed stock to perform basic mass and energy balance calculations for a large scale batch process to analyze the economics of the process to learn various fuel characterization techniques we use refined oil to synthesize biodiesel in lab refined oil contains a mixture of triglycerides free fatty acids and small quantity of impurities triglycerides and free fatty acids are converted to biodiesel through a series of steps these are esterification settling transesterification atmospheric distillation settling and finally vacuum distillation this is our reactor pour the sample into the reactor through a funnel make sure to lift the funnel a little above the mouth of the reactor apply grease to the temperature sensor and close the mouth of the reactor now attach the stirrer rod with the ring adjust the height of the stirrer such that it is dipped into the reactor and no splashing occurs now this is the panel using which you can control the temperature and the stirrer and its speed this temperature indicates the temperature of the reaction mixture when you press the red button the set temperature is displayed you can adjust it using the knobs when you want to make large ad adjustments use the coarse knob use the fine knob to make small adjustments the blinking red light indicates that the oil bath is undergoing heating now you will learn how to control the stirrer switch on the button labeled stirrer this indicates that the stirrer is stirred now we need to determine the ffa content in the oil here we use ethanol as a solvent to dissolve oil so take 5 to 7 ml of ethanol in a conical flask add two drops of phenolphthalein titrate using NaOH a light pink color indicates the titration is complete switch off the stirrer to take the sample from the reactor pip it out a small amount of oil and collect it in a beaker add about 0.1 to 0.2 grams of oil to the ethanol note the exact weight of the oil carefully a light pink color indicates the titration is complete note down the volume of noh consumed in the process esterification this is an acid catalyzed process wherein the ffa present in the raw material is converted to biodiesel the reaction is FFA reacting with methanol in the presence of concentrated H2SO4 to form biodiesel and water. Attach a vertical condenser at the top of the reactor having its inlet attached to the bottom and outlet at the top. This is to ensure that maximum condensation takes place at the bottom itself. Make sure that you have applied grease at the bottom. Remove the cap and place a funnel. Now add the required amount of sulfuric acid and methanol in the reactor. Make sure to close the reactor's mouth using a cap. Let the reaction take place and after every 30 minutes take a sample as shown before and calculate the percentage FFA content. Once the FFA content reaches less than 1%, stop the reaction. After the esterification reaction is complete, dismantle the reactor following these steps. Remove the condenser and the temperature sensor. Loosen the clamp, remove the ring and put the reactor on the platform. Settling. The catalyst added during esterification is separated along with methanol and water. which are produced during esterification place the reactor on a tissue over the platform loosen the nut and remove the lock 
Now gently slide the reactor's lid. Remove the baffle carefully. Now empty the reactor into the separating funnel. Use a funnel. Make sure that the tap is closed and lift the funnel a little above the top. Close the separating funnel as soon as you have emptied the reactor. Leave the mixture for overnight settling. The mixture separates into two layers due to the polarity difference. Generally the upper layer is of methanol, water and sulfuric acid and the lower layer is of triglyceride biodiesel leftover FFA. Weigh an empty beaker and pour the TG layer in it. Make sure to remove the cap of the separating funnel. Be careful when the interface comes and close the tap as soon as the TG layer has been drained. Then weigh the filled beaker to determine the weight of the TG layer. Similarly empty out the acidified methanol layer. The 3x27 test is used to determine if the transesterification reaction is complete. Take 27 ml of methanol in a measuring cylinder. Now pip it out 3 ml of a sample and put it into the cylinder. Stir for some time and leave the mixture for 5 to 10 minutes. After 5 to 10 minutes, it is observed that settling has occurred. This interface shows that there are two layers, one consisting of unreacted triglyceride and the other consisting of methanol. This is an indication that transesterification is not yet complete. Transesterification. This is a base catalyzed process where potassium methoxide is prepared and the triglycerides present in the raw material is converted to biodiesel. After 15 to 20 minutes, add the triglyceride solution to the reactor and allow the reaction to take place for next two and a half hours. After two and a half hours, take a sample from the reactor and pip it out 3 ml of sample. Put it into a measuring cylinder containing 27 ml of methanol. Stir thoroughly and leave the mixture for 5 to 10 minutes. After 5 to 10 minutes, it is evident that there is no layer separation. This is an indication that transesterification is complete. After this, dismantle the reactor and put the reaction mixture for settling into the separating funnel in a way similar to that of esterification. As you can see, the post-trans mixture has separated into two layers. Lower one consists of methanol and glycerol while the upper one contains biodiesel, methanol and other impurities. Just like before, collect the layers in different containers and weigh them. The biodiesel layer is now ready for distillation. Atmospheric distillation. This is done to recover methanol from the transesterified product mixture. Now to extract biodiesel from this mixture, we have to carry out the distillation. At first, we perform atmospheric distillation to get methanol and then vacuum distillation for biodiesel. We cannot use the same process for extraction of both because the normal boiling point of biodiesel is too high for atmospheric distillation and boiling point of methanol becomes very low in vacuum and thus it cannot be extracted by vacuum distillation. In atmospheric distillation, pour the entire solution in the three mouth round bottom flask attached to horizontal condenser. We can use temperature sensor for measuring the temperature of vapors, provision for which has been made in the condenser. Remember to provide insulation around the apparatus to decrease the heat loss. After you have set up the apparatus, set the heat duty to 40 units and switch on the heater. Remember to switch on the water supply to condenser. When the temperature of the mixture rises above 50 degrees centigrade, the condenser will start condensing the methanol vapors. The temperature of the metal sensor will start increasing and then decrease. 
Once the drop rate of methanol becomes very less, the temperature of the vapors start falling. After the temperature falls below 55, stop the atmospheric distillation. After the atmospheric distillation is complete, you need to perform vacuum distillation. The apparatus is the same, but the only thing that is changed is that you need to add a suction line on the sideways opening mouth of the condenser. Here the vapors of the biodiesel start forming once the temperature of the vapors reach 130 degree centigrade and thus condensation. Wait till the biodiesel drop rate becomes very low. Congratulations, you have produced biodiesel. Quality control test. To study the quality control test of biodiesel, we determine flash point, kinematic viscosity, density, cloud point, pore point, and the pH. I have produced biodiesel. A pycnometer, also called a specific gravity bottle, is a device used to determine the density of a liquid. A pycnometer is usually made of glass with a close fitting ground glass stopper with a capillary tube through it so that air bubbles may escape from the apparatus. At first, measure the weight of the empty pycnometer, then pour biodiesel up to the brim, then put the cap of, of the pycnometer. Now we have 25 ml biodiesel inside the pycnometer. Measure the weight again and divide the weight difference by 25 ml to get the density. This device is called Ostwald viscometer. The time taken for the level of the liquid to pass between these marks is proportional to the kinematic viscosity. At first we use distilled water as a test liquid since its viscosity is known. Measure the time. Then follow the same procedure for biodiesel and again note down the time. The dynamic viscosity of biodiesel is equal to the ratio of the respective times taken by the fluids to cross the marks.